coming up on this special 36th America's Cup edition of InTV. We look back at three years of INEOS Team UK. We find out more about this great sportsman from those who know him and from the man himself. We look into the building of Britannia. This is In TV. What an amazing few months it's been. Maybe things didn't work out as we'd hoped, but nevertheless, we have seen some of the best racing a sport's ever had. It's been no mean feat getting here. So let's take a look back over the last three years since Ineos got involved and see just how much work goes into an America's Cup campaign. You know, win the America's Cup, there are three things you have to get right. You have to have a great skipper, you have to have a great design team or build team, and you have to be fully funded. The UK has never had a tick in all those three boxes. So if we can get this competitive boat to the start line, then it's all over to Usain here. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Jim and Andy and the INEOS team for uh, making this commitment, huge commitment to us. And as a group, we're all incredibly uh, focused and determined to, to get this job done. These guys are our assets, not only in terms of sailing, but in terms of their physicality. In the last cup, I was kind of low 90 kilogram weight, and in this cup, I'm looking at being more like 105. My role on the, on the boat, and the requirements are quite different, so I'll be looking to kind of be losing weight on the boat. They were training in a gym once or twice a day. They're out sailing on the water for four or five hours. And then they're also involved with the design of the boat. They're involved with the maintenance of the boat. So you're asking a professional athlete really to work, you know, 12, 14 hour days. And so you've got to find that delicate balance between, you know, getting absolutely maximum you can out of the campaign without breaking people. We've got a really good squad. We've got a really solid core. We've picked some of the best talent in world sailing. Well, let me bring you right up to date with all the main elements of the coronavirus outbreak. And we're going to start in Italy because all schools and universities will close on Thursday. The number of cases in Italy is now past 3,000. We just don't know what, what could happen. We're expecting things are going to get worse in the UK. And again, if that's the case, people ultimately need to be with their family. Just trying to work out what to do with RB1 and keep RB2 on track. Trying to get answers at the moment and make decisions around that is almost impossible. Unfortunately, we were, we were uh, way off the pace in terms of being able to control the boat. Trouble for Ineos Team UK. Clearly, we've got uh, a bit to work on. Nearly all America's Cup boats are about how good the relationship is between design and sailing. We've got just under three weeks until we start with the Challenger Series, and we know that we're way better than what our current performance is. All of us need to believe this is our problem. Now it happens, now it's for real. The confidence of the British team is high. That will count for a lot going into race one. You can talk the talk, but now you gotta walk the walk. I think they need to win a race here today. Just stay left. If anyone thought anyone else was going to have trouble, think again. It truly is game on of the Prada Cup. And they go through to the Prada Cup final.
You respect your opponents, you don't fear them. I think it's going to be a fantastic fight. You want to be racing at the highest level against the best, and this is it, so we're excited. And the battle for the right to challenge Emirates Team New Zealand for the old mark starts now, and it's Luna Rossa in command from the go. Luna Rossa takes first blood against Enios Team UK. We can sell a hell of a lot better than that, and we need to. And they have done it once again. The Prada Cup final is far from over. NES Team UK are heading towards the finish line and they will bag their first win in this final. This team won't give up. Pretty tight, huh? It felt like the right thing to push it. I think if I was doing it again, I think I'd do the same thing. 170 years of hurt continues for that man who has led this team okay. so proudly. Enios Team UK Sorry, guys. are out. Like good effort, though. So Ben Ainsley has won it all, from Olympic goals to the America's Cup. So InTV thought it'd be good to find out more about this great sportsman from those who know him and from the man himself. When I was a kid uh, growing up in Cornwall, I saw these 12 meter boats training and I remember being totally in awe and then someone told me they were America's Cup boats and then I read up a lot about the history of the America's Cup and became sort of, uh, you know, a little bit entranced. You almost certainly have never heard of three times Olympic champion, Team GB's golden sailor, our greatest ever Olympic sailor, Sir Ben Ainsley. You might have heard the name. He is one of Britain's greatest athletes, the most successful Olympian in the field of sailing ever, and is the man behind Britain's charge to bring home the America's Cup. Ben first took to the water at just eight years old, and by the age of 12, he was competing in international competitions. His parents' belief in his potential saw them sell their house in Cornwall to help fund his burgeoning career. At just 19, he won his first Olympic medal, a silver at the 1996 Atlanta Games. Ben was just incredibly focused. I think the thing that, you know, I always took away was his, his ability just to be unwavered in what he wanted to achieve. But Ben Ensley is only 19 and a modest young man. And after all the excitement, he just had to ring his mum. Um, can you come and get me, please? I mean, I can remember watching him in Atlanta, having, you know, been right behind him through the oppies and, and, the, and the youth kind of years, seeing him out there at that age, kind of taking on the rest of the world was like just a massive inspiration. Since then, the world has watched him win countless other medals and tournaments before picking up a knighthood in 2013. Ben's pretty talented. He, he doesn't really have any peers when it comes to especially any form of Olympic sailing or one design boat. To achieve what Ben has achieved at the level Ben has achieved, he has to be exceptional. He has to be single-minded. He has to be determined. He has to be able to put all distractions at, um, away to actually be able to perform and achieve what he does achieve and what he has achieved. Through all his success though, there is one trophy Ben longs to win for Britain. The America's Cup. Having tasted success with Team USA in 2013, he set to work building a team to bring it home. Ben gave me a call and he was just like, hey Fred, like, I think there's a chance we can get a British syndicate off the ground. Are you willing to come with me? And I didn't have to think for a second. Ben led his team to their first attempt in 2017, but they fell short of victory. Driven by a desire to win and an unwavering belief in excellence, Ben wasn't going to stop there. He went again, but this time with the backing of Ineos. Britain have never managed to win, win that trophy, which is the oldest competition in the world. I was sort of quite intrigued by that. I really like Ben, he's obviously, a, you know, apart from being a very nice guy, he's obviously clearly a very, very serious sailor and a very accomplished sailor and probably the world's best sailor. This desire to never give up is something he demands from all his colleagues. When you sail against him, he's pretty aggressive. He's very good at starting and very good tactically. And, he's, you know, there's so many strengths. And then um, you can jump on the other side of the fence and you start 
you know, sailing with him. He's of such a high caliber, he just demands excellence from the people that he sails with. You think you're sailing well and you think that you're on the money, but he will find ways to make you better. You will just stay out there until something that he wants is perfect is perfect. And then you'll do it five more times to make sure you lock it in. Having someone like that kind of on the wheel behind you, knowing that he's literally gonna push it as hard as possible and there's nothing that's gonna kind of stop him. It, for me, is you know a huge attribute to this team. But... Wow, that's brilliant. Well done. Outside the sport though, he's a very different individual. And I've worked with Ben for 20 years and uh, he is always thinking, he's always focused and you have to keep up, you have to keep up with him. He fascinates me in his split personalities in a way because he is the nicest guy off the boat. When he steps off the dock onto the yacht, he is not the Ben Ainsley that sits in his office. Ben and I have a good relationship. It's, uh, you know, one of the reasons our offices are right next to each other is so you sort of hear each other on the phone. It's like a marriage, you know? Like, you need to be close to the other person. I've served with him in an America's Cup environment over 13 years now, and watching that evolution of him over those 12 years has been, has been cool, actually. And he has come to realise that the way that he leads on shore will have a direct correlation into how well the boat goes on the water. All good? Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, get pushing, get back on the water. Thanks, everyone. He's a great leader. He's, um, he's a great person to be around. He's at the core. He's a really, really good sailor and he's a pleasure to sail with. Ben's ability to inspire his colleagues, coupled with his drive and passion, have driven the team to new heights. And despite success eluding them once more, this story is far from over. Coming on the breeze now. Oh, be on the breeze. I was really proud of the team. We didn't, we didn't jack it in, we went down fighting. And I guess Ben is someone who never looks back. He looks forward at the next challenge. So although he's achieved these remarkable things, he still feels that he hasn't achieved what he needs to achieve, what he wants to achieve, and that is the America's Cup. We're going to learn from this, go back to the drawing board, and come back and do a better job in the future. Unquestionably, the biggest challenge of this America's Cup has been to build the boat. These majestic, foiling 75-foot monohulls didn't even exist two years ago. NTV has been tracking the incredible build of this amazing vessel. When Team New Zealand won the America's Cup in 2017, it meant that they got to choose not only where the next event would be staged, but also which type of boat would be used. What they came up with took everyone by surprise. People felt, wow, they've really, you know, really gone for it with this concept. It's, it is absolutely unique. Nobody has sailed a boat like that before. It's something that we've never seen in, in sailing. And Make no mistake, this is a very, very radical boat. Some design teams will get it right and some will get it wrong. This could be seriously cool, but also, you know, is it, is it frankly, is it gonna work? The only way to find out if it was indeed going to work was to build a test boat. It comes with a high degree of complexities. It does suggest that we've created something inherently unstable, which we have. So it's going to be amazingly difficult to sail, but we're super excited to get our hands on it. So yeah, exciting times. Foiling is relatively new to the world of sailing, and up to this moment had only been applied to catamaran or multi-hull boats. The idea is that if a boat picks up enough speed, she will be able to glide or fly across the water. Ineos and Ben were the first revelation that actually, you know what, Eureka, this thing works. Apart from basic rules governing dimensions and weight, the shape and layout of the boat will be down to each team's designers. The sailing team said to the designers, make the fastest boat possible and we will fit in around your design. As it is new technology, each team will get to build two race boats over the next two years. With the shape of the boat now decided, it was time to build the carbon fibre hull. But first, they needed a mould. This is, if this is the male plug, which we're standing on now, we build the mould on like that, turn it off, that's a mould. This will actually be more or less the finished kind of geometry of the deck. 
It's the first time anyone from the team had seen the scale of the boat up close, and there was only one way to describe it. It looks big. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, the curve at the back is really big. Oh. Yeah, it's a big bit of kit. Oh, indeed. <laughs> it's big. Big. It's not that thick in the scheme of things, is it? No. Carrington's shipbuilders in nearby Hythe is where the carbon fibre hull is being kitted out and finished. It may look pretty simple from the outside, but when she is finished, there will be 18,000 separate parts. That's going to be an interesting challenge. <laughs> Britannia was launched onto the water later than her competitors, and one thing stood out, her shape. This is the first indication that they're anticipating a boat that will be falling pretty much the whole race. Whereas our boat's designed to be floating some of the, you know, and the Kiwis just have discounted that side of the competition. So the tough decision for us is whether, which way we go with the second boat. With so much to do and such little time left, the team sought support from one of the world's leading race teams. We make a car that is designed with one purpose in mind, and that's to win races and win championships. They make a boat that is exactly for the same thing, and every single design decision they take is in pursuit of that goal. Every single design decision we take is in pursuit of that goal. That tends to give a very similar mindset amongst the type of people that do boat design and the type of people that do car design. We actually have a few of our staff members working permanently with the team. Our input there has been, I hope, helpful. I hope we've sort of felt like good teammates to them, but it's their competition. With Mercedes Formula One engineers now on the team and helping with data analysis and part sourcing, ITUK was able to get back on track with the build of Raceboat 2. However, critical sailing time on the water was in short supply. And with the team forced into lockdown by the coronavirus pandemic, any chance of testing Raceboat 2 before it left the UK was now gone. How different is RB2 to RB1? Very. <laughs> Raceboat 2 arrived in New Zealand just four months before racing was due to start. Early outings on the water revealed there was plenty of work left to do. We have a foil issue, no question about it. And what do you do? You either sort of break down in tears and give up, or you keep fighting and try and solve the issue. We're working towards a fix, and when we get that fix, there's every chance it's gonna make a significant difference to our performance and get us back in the race. By the time the round robin races came around and the wind began to blow, the team had sorted out their foil issue and were back on track. It was clear that sailing in an AC-75 was like nothing else experienced before in the America's Cup. When you're on the boat and you look around the people that you're sailing with, you know they're the very best in the world. You look at the bit of kit you're standing on and you know that nobody else, it's like walking on the moon for the first time, you know that nobody else in the history of the sport has done what we are doing right now. There's never a boring day out there, that's for sure. There's no doubt where Sir Ben Ainsley sees the future of the America's Cup. I think the AC75 class has proven to be a real hit, credit to uh, you know, the teams that came up with, with that concept, and we would like to see the Cup stay in the AC-75. Well, that's it for this AC-36 special edition of InTV. We hope you've enjoyed our America's Cup journey as much as we have. A huge thank you to everyone who's made this possible. And congratulations to Emirates Team New Zealand on winning the Cup, but also to the people of New Zealand for staging an incredible event in the middle of a global pandemic. 170 years is a long time to wait, but the journey is not over yet. 
No sooner had Emirates Team New Zealand crossed the finish line than the Royal Yacht Squadron and INEOS Team UK had registered our desire to be the challenger of record for AC37. And the great news is that challenge has been accepted. So stay tuned and until then, stay safe. Thank you.